Thousands of voices hold the stories that can teach us about a dark chapter in America's past. At the Densho Project, our mission is to preserve these memories before they fade away. The first Japanese began emigrating to the United States in the late 1800s. By 1940, Japanese Americans were more or less settled into American society. This all changed on December 7, 1941, when suddenly they looked like the enemy. And before my mother got home, the FBI showed up, and it must have been shortly after lunch. They came for my dad that night, early on the morning of December 8th. One of the teachers said, you people bomb Pearl Harbor, and I'm going, my people, you know. All of a sudden, my Japanese-ness became very aware to me. I was seen as a Jap, the same as the enemy. The surprise attack on Pearl Harbor made America angry and afraid. As Japan's army and navy swept unchallenged through the Pacific, most Americans thought it perfectly reasonable to take action against their Japanese-American neighbors here at home. Even today, many Americans still don't know that more than 120,000 Japanese-Americans, two-thirds of them U.S. citizens, were forced from their homes and put behind barbed wire because of their race. Not until 1983, almost 40 years later, would a U.S. Congressional Commission uncover evidence from the war years proving there had been no military necessity for the mass incarceration of Japanese Americans. In 1997, there were two forces that really shaped Densho. The first one was that our elders in our community were dying. These were people who lived through World War II, and we needed to get their stories, so there's a sense of urgency. The second force was the emergence of high technology. Here we had digital video, the internet, and multimedia computers to really preserve these stories for the future. Even before the war, well, I felt... And when I think back eight years, I realize how far we've come. When we first started, we didn't know how to do interviews, so we had to train ourselves, train volunteers, and then we were ready. But what threw us for a loop was that when we started asking people to be interviewed, many of them said no. They said the stories were, were too painful. And so we had to tell them that the stories weren't for them or really for my generation, they were for future generations. And that's what we're gonna to have to do the same thing where we're gonna scan these. And that's why we call ourselves the Dential Project because Dential means to pass stories on to the next generation. And our narrator said, you know, that's really why they're doing this. So once the community saw what we're doing, they saw the value of our work and they want to support it. So right away, we started receiving checks, which allowed us then to continue doing more interviews and collect more photos and more documents. And so right now, just day by day doing this work, we've collected over 230 interviews. We've collected over 6,000 photographs and documents. And all this is now available uh, online on the internet. To make these unique materials widely available, Densho created a massive web database. With just a few clicks of a mouse, users anywhere in the world can see and hear entire interviews indexed by topic, complete with written transcripts, or they can sift through thousands of historic documents and rare photographs pulled from basements and closets, then scanned into the database. As a result, Densho's web archive is not only a comprehensive living history, but an unparalleled resource for understanding what happened to Japanese Americans. Every year, over 80,000 people come to our website, and they come from all over the world. But what really excites me is that most of them are students. 
And that's important because our mission at Densho is education. We're not